Okay, and we're going to get started. All right, just let me know that you can see my screen. Yes, All looks right. good. Perfect, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is the middle of January and I'm excited to have you so we can talk about how do we get ready for 2023, make some small changes instead of making big resolutions, but we actually do this in the way that doesn't seem overwhelming so that way we can take all these small changes and take them with us throughout the year. Uh, my name is Olga St. Pierre. I'm a longtime community contributor. Uh, my full-time job is I am a real estate agent. And uh, as you can imagine, a lot of the tips and tricks have come from my experience in uh, working with clients and asking them for advice and suggestions. And it truly is my passion to be contributing to, in our community uh, with the information that we have found online, on internet, yet we took it and make it more manageable and uh, fun for all of us in our community. We have been helping clients move across the United States and Canada for the last 14 years. It is my passion. I do this with my husband who recently retired from active duty military and he joined me. So it's a team of three. We are a mighty force. And we are very happy to be with you. Our team mission is helping anyone with the plan and the desire to become a homeowner. And we stay with you, with you throughout your life transition, depending on where you go and what you want to do. We are there with you every step of the way. We do have a complete move solution to help you from start to finish, because as you can imagine, moving is very stressful, and we're trying to always make it as stress-free as possible. And part of our commitment is having concierge service. Think of this as your yellow pages from start to finish. If you need recommendations for contractors to do work on your home, helping you declutter, helping you put some of these systems in place that I'm going to mention to you today, please don't hesitate to reach out. This is why we do what we do and we are here for you and our recommendations are absolutely free of charge to you. So we hope that you enjoy tonight's workshop. So let's get started. One of the first things that I recommend and I still do it and we've been doing it for a couple of years and it's so much fun. It does not take money. A lot of the times you can just use what you have yet it has, it has created so much joy in our family, as well as other families that have decided to uh, embark on this journey with us. And it's just a simple memories jar. So all you really need is a jar with a lid. Or if you want, you can use a box, sticker and the marker to decorate, and then index cards that you're going to cut in pieces, or you can use plain paper and a pen, right? So use what you have. So the goal is every week you're going to write a note with a good thing that happened that week, something that you are grateful for, maybe a fun memory that you have uh, accomplished or a goal that you have accomplished, and then you're going to place it in the jar. And then on the New Year's Eve at the end of the year, we're going to empty the whole jar, and then we're going to read about all the amazing things that we have accomplished in one year. And the reason why this is so much fun is because a lot of the times where you remember the bad things that have happened, and then we start thinking about, well, what did we do in February? Oh, yeah, there was snow. We, we think about some of the negative things. And the goal is to have only positive things that you're going to take with you into the new year. So you can do that. Another kind of cool twist on it is what you can do is you can put some money in the jar or have a separate box. And each week you put in a note and let's say you put in a $10 or $20 bill in your jar. So that way at the end of the year, you actually have a nice, a nice amount of money that you can use towards purchasing your uh, presents for your loved ones or maybe putting it towards some savings if you're looking to grow your rainy day fund. Of course, there's also a digital version that is available. There's a couple of different free gratitude apps. And the one that we recommend here is called Gratitude. There's different features and it kind of helps you and it's going to prompt you to do something perhaps every day or maybe every week. And it's another fun way if you don't want to do it on paper, but you want to always keep it with you. If you're traveling, it's always going to be on your phone. 
Now let's talk about saving. You guys know who have been with us for a while, that have been on our workshops, the importance of saving. And I think the most important thing that I want you to take away is that you can make this budgeting and saving fun. And the reason why we keep talking about saving, saving, saving is because Unfortunately, there are statistics that's out there that says that the majority of Americans only have maybe $1,000 or $2,000 saved and have it sitting somewhere in a savings account or their rainy day fund. But what I encourage you to, to do is, what if your car breaks down? What if suddenly you lose a job, right? The, the economy so far, the new year starting out is a little bit you know cautious. And I'm always a big proponent of having at least six months of rainy day fund in your savings account. What if you need to get your car repaired? What if something happens, your water heater goes, or God forbid your furnace goes? That's thousands of dollars that have to be paid out of your pocket and other emergencies. It could be a million different things. So my recommendation to you is let's have some fun and make it again, uh, again. So we actually have a $10,000 bingo card for you right here. And the goal is, is that every week you pick an amount. And this is why it's a different amount, because depending on the week, you may or may not have a certain amount of money. Yet the goal is to save $10,000 in the next 12 months. So every time you say, OK, I have 30 bucks that I can put away, you're going to cross that off. And then what happens is afterwards, when this whole card, every single square is crossed off on it, I'm going to ask you to pat yourself on the back because you have done an amazing job and you now have $10,000 in your savings account. If you would like us to mail you or send you a copy of this bingo card for savings, please let us know. And we will be glad to get you out a copy via email or via mail. So we talked about resolutions, and I know a lot of times people will say that the word resolutions just sounds too heavy. So what I invite you to do is make it fun again. I think that's what we need to do is we need to make plans and we do and we the things that we know we have to do. How do we make it a game so that way it's something that you're looking forward to? So here's a great way for you to do this. We are now entering and starting 2023. Why don't you make 23 things to explore in 23. You can get things organized by maybe themes or subject. Have a couple of things for family, career, fun, health and ventures. You can do maybe 12 easy items. You can do 11 stretch items. You can do categories like absolutely have to, maybe try, because those things are going to count and it's always better than do. Because do is very, very final, and then you're going to beat yourself up if you didn't do it, okay? So you can also make a list of 23 things that you can that involve number 23, like read 23 books or go for a walk and you know spend 23 minutes outdoors or maybe reach out to 23 people. So we have a couple of suggestions here for you. And the goal is for you to realize that you're making a list of 23 things that you will be okay with not getting all 23 things accomplished in the year. And that's perfectly okay. So we have the template that we can send to you. So please let us know. We'll be happy to do that. And my next suggestion to you also, this is a perfect month to do it, is let's review our 2022 and make your Tada list. So Tada is something you're going to pat yourself on the back and you can use the gratitude jar notes to kind of jog your memory. The goal is to make a list of 22 things. Again, we're, we're putting the spin on it and using a number positive things that took place last year, kind of thinking back and reviewing your calendar and then you're making that list. And I guarantee you a smile is going to come on your face because you realize how many fun things that you have done in the year prior. So an easy way to keep and create new habits and decisions and goals. I think this is one of the hardest things that we do. And the reason is, is that when you are thinking about doing something new, it's not part of your routine that you do on a subconscious level. So think about the fact that when you get up, you have a routine. You don't even think about it. You grab a shower, then you get your coffee, then maybe you check your social media feed. These things you do on a regular basis because they're now part of your routine. 
one of the easiest ways for you to add a new habit to your list of things is to add that habit and attach it to something that you already are doing. So for example, let's say you want a you want to floss your teeth because you have been bad, you haven't been flossing well, and your dentist said you need to floss. So one of the suggestions would be is when you're brushing your teeth in the morning, you have a sticky note on the mirror that is reminding you once you brush, you need to floss, right? So the visual reminder is going to be the sticky note. And then the cue would be for you to do something with after brushing your teeth. You always brush your teeth. So then the cue with your sticky note is going to be, okay, as soon as I'm done brushing my teeth, my next new habit is going to be flossing my teeth. Okay. The same thing is think about um, like one of the things that I worked on a couple of years ago was I wanted to do yoga on a regular basis. So what I did is I attached that new habit to my tea kettle. So I boil tea or water in the morning for my tea or coffee, depending on what I feel like having. And I knew that it was it would take seven minutes for my tea kettle to boil. So the little button that says turn on was my little cue that as soon as I push that button, I now have to go upstairs, get my mat out, and I have seven minutes to do some kind of yoga exercise. And as soon as I'm done, I go downstairs and my tea kettle is ready and I'm ready to have my breakfast. So again, make it small. I think... If you attach it to something that you do on a regular basis, you have the highest probability of success of making this new uh, goal an actual habit when you add it to your actual routine. So other things that we're talking about is how do we make our life easier? And I think a lot of you know that I'm a big believer in setting up systems that just make things simpler because you know we always constantly... Uh, encounter things that we have to do. We always have to react to something, catch up with something because life is life. They will always throw something in your way. So one of the things that I have tackled is in my own personal life is a couple of these suggestions. Hang a notepad on your fridge and you can use it for a grocery list, reminders, thoughts, uh, writing love notes to your kids and your partner. Uh, use that for whatever you think is that you need, but get that stuff on your mind out of your head and on paper because it's going to help you process this better. You're not going to forget and you know that it's it's kind of set in stone. Planning for unexpected. Here is a great thing to kind of ease your mind and for, allow you for to be always be prepared. We buy cards in bulk and we buy cards that are pretty, yet at the same time, they are plain. There's the, there doesn't say happy birthday, doesn't say thank you, doesn't say anything at all. There's no words on the cover on inside. This way you can use that card for just about any reason. If you need to jot a quick thank you note, if you have a birthday coming up and you forgot about it, or if someone is, you know, you had a death in the family, someone is sick, you can use this plain card to jot down a quick note and send someone a note to let them know that you care. Buying gift bags and tissue paper in plain and natural in various sizes. You can do this very easily in the dollar store. And then you can put everything in a clear bin and store it perhaps under your bed or maybe in your closet. This way, it's very easy when you need something. You get your tote out and you make your plan and then off you go. Just simple. A little bit on decluttering and freshening up. This is something, of course, a lot of people do want to do in the beginning of the year to kind of start the year fresh. And also kind of think about is a lot of a lot of times we want to do this when we are kind of hibernating, right? Because we're in the middle of the winter season. So quick declutter, use your waiting time from when you are waiting for your coffee and teapot to brew. You have 10 to 12 minutes when you're waiting for your pasta to cook. Maybe you're waiting for a family member to get out of the shower, commercial breaks on TV. Those are all very different time frames. However, make it a game. That's what I do. My coffee takes seven minutes to brew. So in seven minutes, I know that I can unload and load the dishwasher. I can spruce up a little bit to clean up my kitchen countertops. And I just work from one end to the other. 
right? Again, you don't have to complicate it, but make it simple. So think about some of the things that maybe you can do is you can take your 12 minutes, you're waiting for the pasta to cook. What can you accomplish? Maybe you can vacuum one room. Maybe you can do a quick mop. Perhaps you can go through your mail and sort everything and then put everything in the recycle pile. So think about how you can do this because you have a limited amount of time and you're going to make it a game and you're going to challenge yourself to make it accomplished, right? Uh, clean out your medicine cabinet. This is something that I do recommend that you do at the end of the year. Everything that is um, expired medication, also the same thing, tackle your makeup, your lotions. If things that are older than six months, definitely if they're older than a year, it's time to throw it away and then get yourself some fresh items, especially with all the sales that are happening this month. And then don't forget to clean your most often used helpers. These are the things that we touch and use every day. Think about your earbuds, remotes, our phones, car shifters and steering wheel, keys, purses, our laptops, tablets, and other tech. Don't forget to wipe it on a regular basis because we're touching with our hands probably 300 to, uh, times a year. And this information I actually took from our declutter workshop. And uh, we will share a link with you with our schedule for the, the for the workshop coming up so that way we can, this is where we actually dive in super, super deep and share with you uh, decluttering tips for every single room in your home. And of course, some of the other things that we are recommending always, think about it this way, when you are doing some of these decluttering uh, things and you have that decluttering time, the goal is to have a system where you set it up so that way you don't have to worry about ever going back to again, to like starting from the beginning and having to do it all over again, time and time and again. So the idea is, you know, take the time to properly make your bed, you know, store fewer things. Don't buy big jugs of lotion, even though I probably it's less expensive because then you're going to feel bad throwing away the lotion. That's what I did this year. I actually bought half of the size of my Avena lotion that I use because I would rather use up the bottle and then six months in July, bought it, buy a fresh bottle and use it again because now I know that my product is fresh and I'm putting it on my face. Same thing, streamlining in storage in the kitchen using uniform hangers, having some kind of landing station. We actually use a basket where we put all our keys and things that we use on a regular basis when we're heading out. And then having some stylish storage that's going to make you happy, maybe not boxes, but maybe baskets, is another great way for you to kind of tuck away things that you use on a regular basis, but maybe you don't want to have them displayed. All right, we're going to now. This is a really cool tip that we found recently about maximizing your vacation. And what we're talking about here is taking the days off that you get because it's a holiday, taking our weekends and maximizing truly the vacation time, right? So like, for example, in January with the Martin Luther Day King coming up, if you were to take Thursday and Friday before that day off, you will get that following, the following Monday off, that's five days in a row. So if you really wanted to plan a vacation, but only having to take a few days off, this is the way to do it. So we have some recommendations here for you. For most of the holidays, it's amazing, right? Like for example, in December, if you take four days off, you're actually going to have 10 days off in a row. So see if that's going to help you maybe planning some vacation time that you can maximize the days off. Travel tips and super cool ideas. Uh, so when you travel, a couple of suggestions. Number one, use packing cubes. So this is some, a concept that I discovered a few years ago. And the idea there is for you to pack your things in different little uh, cubes and they have zippers. So that way, if you are only looking for a sweater, you know you're gonna go into the packing cube that has your, your sweaters or your pants. And then the same thing with your you know, undergarments, the same thing with your all of your electronics. You keep everything separate, this way it's all organized in your suitcase. Always don't forget to bring your mobile battery charger. It's important to make sure you don't run out of battery, especially if you're using your GPS on your phone. 
getting a TSA pre-check will save you a ton of time and frustration when you're going through security at the airport. It does cost a little bit of money, but I just re renewed mine for another five years and it's a huge lifesaver. Consider using Airbnb to be able to rent not just a hotel room style space, but being able to rent the whole uh, condo, like apartment or even a townhouse. This way you have access to the kitchen so you can make the meal and save money instead of eating out, as well as having access to the laundry to do your, to do your laundry. Of course, Uber is amazing for getting around. And if you are local to our area, Mercer County, New Jersey has an amazing airport that uh, where Frontier Airlines flies from uh, to many, many destinations, and it's only 20 minutes away for most of us. My next suggestion, it's kind of ties into the memory jar, is recording memories from your trips. I actually took this as a suggestion from my oldest daughter who has a travel journal. What she does is she will create a space. She, she just uses a regular notebook and she collects uh, stubs and tickets and different um, information from museums, pamphlets, wherever we go, she'll grab that information and then she'll cut it and then she'll create really cool collage of the places that she's been. And it also serves an amazing memory joggers when we're looking at our memories to see which places we actually went to because we, when we travel, we try to maximize the time that we are away. So the the book the books that she has created are truly amazing and what i also like to do is use some of these stops as my uh, bookmarks for when i'm reading because this also brings positive memories back uh, from the trips that we took Some additional trips, uh, tips I have here for you for travel that you can kind of check out. There is a science as to how you can look for uh, inexpensive flights on the, the dates you, need, you can fly, where you can book, when you can fly in the morning, which day of the week. So I just took this information and I said, okay, I can maybe use something depending on what my travel plans are. So I definitely encourage you to kind of check it out when you get the workbook and play around a little bit with it. We have some uh, some suggestions and advice here for you. We also have a vacation checklist for you. Again, this is another system that you can set up to help you navigate. And that way, when you are off and away on vacation, you don't have to think about how you forgot to do something. So this is a postcard, or we can send it to you as a PDF document. But this way, when before you head out on your vacation, you can just check things off and you know that everything at home is going to be in tip-top shape for when you get back. Let's make it fun. So we are on Zoom now. And as you can imagine, a lot of trainings, a lot of meetings are taking place on Zoom and it can get tiring and I totally understand that. So my suggestion to you is to scroll through Eventbrite. Uh, some of you have found me on Eventbrite as well and I do it all the time and I search for some interesting classes, uh, for some free workshops, some interesting information and I just sign up and I join because this is something maybe that I want to learn something more about or maybe I want to create a new hobby for myself. So I kind of encourage you to do the same thing. I have some other suggestions for you. This website is amazing where you can actually do a virtual tour of some world-class museums. When you have some time, definitely check it out. My next tip is for you to use your prized and favorite things. This is something that I'm taking from our declutter workshop as well. Think about the things that um, you keep and store in a safe place because maybe it brings you memories because you got it from a loved one. Maybe it's something that you received because when you got married. So I'm talking about your dishes and your china and crystal, your spoons, towels, table covers, sheets, and your special clothing. What I encourage you and invite you to do is not to save it because if you're saving it, you're not using it. And the goal is for you to enjoy these things that you got during a special time in your life or maybe it's for a special occasion but the goal is for you to use those things to actually enjoy them so that way they're not sitting in your cupboards and collecting dust and we also did some really cool experiments last year to make it memorable so this is me 
right here when I was, I'm not, actually not sure how old I was, maybe six, maybe seven. No, that was younger than that. And this is my dad. So last year, him and I decided to recreate our picture. And this is um, my assistant, Jess, and that's her and her brother. And they decided to recreate the same thing. So we made it fun. So we kind of encourage you to do the same thing. So find something, some, some of your favorite photos, and then challenge your loved ones and your family to recreate and see how you're going to look back then and how you're going to look now. I have some additional party hacks here for you. And the goal is to use what you have and make your life easier as well. You can use the muffin tin as a serving tray. I actually love using it for condiments for when you're doing some barbecue and you're making hamburgers, right? You can also use muffin tins for leftovers. It's easy to reheat with no dishes. And then you can use a twin sheet as a, a sheet as a table cover. It doesn't blow away. You don't have to worry about, you know, using clips and then you can just easy to wash it and then reuse again. Uh, birthday freebies. This is always so much fun, but to remember a lot of companies are offering freebies to you during the month of your birthday. So you don't have to run out and do everything on your birth date. Uh, there's lots of fun things that you can do. And I have a list here and just remember this is not everything. And also your furry friends, your furry babies can also get some freebies as well. I, I have some suggestions here for you at the bottom as well. How do we make it easier to clean our home? My recommendation to you is set up a system, right? So a system of things that are, uh, they can do like be multi-use, right? You don't have to have something just to clean your windows or just to clean your floors. Let's figure out a system of things that can do double, triple job, are always there for you and help you. So that is gonna be your cleaning system. And some of these things are with what I use. I actually have this uh, Bissell vacuum cleaner. What I love about it, it's very easy to disassemble to clean and it's super light. It's like really like this small and I can carry it out around easier. And some of my older clients said the same thing that it's super easy to use and it's not heavy to log around. Making your uh, life easier with having some things in your car. So if you, like me, who do spend a lot of time in the car, I had to make some uh, adjustments and had some special things included because I wanted to make sure that I always had the necessary things, whether it was for my kids, whether it was for me or for my work. But I have some recommendations here for you if you are having and prepping things that you need for your humans in your life. Here are some suggestions here for you. Definitely have some water. You don't want to get dehydrated. Cleaning supplies, trash bags, hand sanitizer, uh, phone battery, charger pack is great. Blankets, uh, gloves, plug bags, and shopping bags are always great. And for your car, make sure that we're always keeping our car in tip-top shape. Uh, having all of our car registration insurance cards your uh, car manual needs to be included. Definitely have your first aid kit and your flashlight and the basic toolkit, just in case if you break down and you need to do something. Personal and family, I have some really cool suggestions here for you. Again, the goal is to make your life a little bit easier. Take advantage of the curbside pickup. Target has it, BJ's has it. It's gonna save you time. And it's also going to save you money because you're not going to be able to run around the store and browse and say, oh, I could use this, which means additional money spent. Uh, Instacart is great for grocery delivery, and they have really expanded in the last few years. You can get things delivered even from Lowe's and Home Depot, from CVS. So uh, check them out. It's a great service. Keeping receipts for warranties is extremely important. My recommendation to you, don't just uh, keep a copy because paper fades. Definitely scan them or take a picture, keep them on your phone. Because if you cannot provide a copy of your receipt to proof as a proof of purchase, uh, the company's not going to honor their warranty. A crazy Coupon Lady app is great for deals and things that are happening and in, in, in clearance. It'll save you time uh, with looking for this information. And another recommendation is to keep your financial health in order, is to go ahead and pull your credit for free. 
at this website. So annualcreditreport.com is a website that was set up by the three credit bureaus to help you keep an eye out on your own credit. And uh, my recommendation to you is to kind of spread it out over the year and do it one report every quarter and just go through it line by line and make sure that everything that's on there is the way it's supposed to be. Because if it's not, I can tell you that it can sometimes take months to get things figured out because you need to write to them. They will have to update them. And sometimes it takes 30, 60, or even 90 days to get everything organized. And that's what I have to share with you today. If you have any questions, you can always reach me. And we have our schedule uh, that is posted with all of our workshops at Live with Olga. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that way you can get a recording of this workshop. We are at Penn Jersey Living with Olga. And at Home with Olga is where all of our workshops and our helpful information is all living. And if you're on social media, most of the time I am hanging out on Facebook. So I would love to connect with you. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, we're always looking for those so that way we can update our workshops and of course make them better. So let's see, any questions or any suggestions or any feedback that you guys have. I know that I provided you with a lot of information and my goal is for you to take away a couple of things. When you get the recording to the workshop, please rewatch it. Or you can even listen to it in the car, just put the YouTube video on and play it in your, on your phone and take a look at the workbook and then kind of pick and choose a couple of things that make sense to you and then run with them, right? So the goal is to give you a, a bunch of different things that are useful but may, that may not relate to you right now. But the goal is for you just to take a couple of things that you say to yourself, you know what? I would love to do this now because it's going to make you happy. It's going to make my life easier. And then you take those things and you actually implement them, right? That's what we're doing. It's kind of like slow and steady process. So, all right, Mary, I got your information. Thank you. Uh, Mona, I got your information as well. And we just posted all of our recordings and our YouTube channel, as well as the schedule in the chat as well, if you want just to click over right now and kind of check out and see what we have coming up. Cindy, thank you. I got your information as well. And Teresa, I got yours as well. Thank you. I'm not sure who the iPhone is. But if you want to forward your information as well, that would be great. So we can get you a copy of the recording and a workshop. Perfect. I'm glad that you all liked it. Thank you. I'm just copying the information. Right. Perfect. I'm glad that you guys found it informative. We hope to see you again with us. We have a workshop probably rolling just about every week, and we have a couple of things that are scheduled up through the month of March right now. So we would love to join you again and see you. And if there's nothing else, we're going to sign off. I, we hope you have a good rest of your week and a good rest of your evening. Teresa says she can't talk baby sleeping. Okay. No worries. <laughs> no worries. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good night.